There's nothing in the sky that can harm you except the sun, if you look at the sun. And with an eclipse, of course, we're tempted to look at the sun. We want to watch the eclipse. And it has to be done safely. So I'm going to go over uh, do's and don'ts. Don't improvise. If you don't know what you're doing, you know, like sunglasses are not it. You don't stack dozens of sunglasses because it's actually not, not just visible light. It's actually mostly not visible light that does the damage. It's uh, ultraviolet and infrared that uh, can really literally fry your eye. So you need uh, the proper materials and proper techniques. Okay. <laughs> These are uh, images of people's retinas after they've stared at eclipses. So it's not a, it's not just you know propaganda to scare the masses. It actually, you're not even aware of it when it happens. And when we look at something intensely, we tend to look with the fovea centralis, the densely packed part of our eye filled with nerves that allows us to see uh, fine detail, like print on a page or something like that. It's actually a very tiny part of your eye that has that much detail. And when you concentrate heat and light on it, it's like getting a sunburn. And actually, at first, just like with a sunburn, you might not know that you know there's maybe slight discomfort. You might have a little bit of trouble. It's actually a couple days later that you start noticing that you can't, you know, you can look at a page and where did the letters go? Your brain kind of tends to fill in the, the gap, just like it does with our natural blind spot, which is where our nerves and... Uh, and uh, blood system come together in the eye, so you're not aware of it. But that happens to the center of your vision, and essentially you're you're you know unable to see normally. You can so the short version is: vision. don't do it, don't think don't about do it. doing it, don't yeah. try it, don't experiment, don't do it. Yeah, it is actually literally dangerous. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at how how you do watch it. Well, nature provides some ways. Uh, uh, overlapping leaves produce a natural pinhole. So if you look under a tree or anything that has holes that can project quite a distance, you'll see images of the, of the partial parts of the eclipse as the moon is slowly covering over the photosphere. Uh, you can also create a pinhole. Um, this, this is a fancy one. You really literally can just take a piece of paper and a pin and poke a hole in it. But if you want to make something a little more durable, use cardboard, make a bigger hole in it, and then cover it with foil. And then you can make a very neat hole with, with a pin, and it'll produce a better image. You can go crazy, use a hole punch, and uh, <laughs> make a pattern. And then you can hold it far enough away from another piece of paper, and you can make little patterns of the eclipse. Now, these are fuzzy because it can't be any sharper than the size of the pinhole. But you can improve that uh, using reading glasses. If you use one diopter, which are the weakest reading glasses you can get at a 99 cent store or a dollar store or something like that. Um, you can Those are the more expensive ones at the dollar store compared to the... Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you don't need to... The idea of this is you don't Sorry. need to spend more than a dollar and you can use junk to build the rest of it. And you can get it actually a pretty superb view. Uh, you can cover the one of the lenses with something that has a one centimeter hole or you just use a hole punch, put it on a card, and then you'll be using the best part of your 99 cent lens and uh, it's sharp enough in this, uh, during the transit of Venus, for instance, using the setup, uh, my brother was able to uh, photograph Venus going across the sun. You can see sunspots with it, stuff like that. So it's better than a normal pinhole. Here's Patrick several eclipses ago with just a mirror. This is just an ordinary little you know, square mirror. And uh, you can reflect it many tens of feet, and it'll actually produce a pretty nice image. Now, again, it's a little bit fuzzy, just like a pinhole projector, but if you're far enough away, it acts just the same way. You project it on the shaded side of a building. You know, white building helps. OK, then we have the Griffith Observatory Solarama. This is a special uh, plastic that does not let any ultraviolet or infrared through, and it b dims the sun a factor of 100,000, so the sun is comfortable to look at. It looks like a bright moon or something. and uh, you just hold this up and look through it. Uh, one trick people sometimes do is to uh, clip a couple holes in it and put a, a string through it so you can hang it around your neck and it, you always know where it is. <laughs> in the excitement of an eclipse, it's easy to forget. And that's what the sun looks like through one of these. By the way, the, are these on sale now? Do we have that data? Yes. On? Um, we will be getting a shipment of 10,000 on Friday. As of now, there is approximately 100 of each. 
So, okay. so there's a she few just in said, the store for, now. to amplify, there are 100, so especially for you, all of you out there in there the depths of space, go, go <laughs> right to the store. Uh, 100 of them now. About oh, actually, they should have gotten their shit today. Oh, they're, oh. oh, today is Friday. Yeah, today's Friday. Yeah. Oh, so your scalping plans. Okay. Okay, and then uh, same material can be used to make little shades, to, to, so these are called sun shades. And uh, uh, they do exactly the same thing, but they're they're pleasant to look through. I like the kind of orange color that they produce. Um, now you can also project using a telescope. You have to be careful with this, though. And we, I used to be more uh, enthusiastic about recommending this, but a lot of telescopes and binoculars are made with plastic parts now, so you can destroy them if if you don't know. So I wouldn't recommend this if you're not sure of your binocular. But you can uh, cover one side and then project the image, and you can focus it until so you get a large, detailed image. You can see sunspots, stuff like that. Uh, you can get filter. Ah, haha. Uh -huh. Well, good. I'm glad. I like your reaction. But you can get uh, nice solar filters again that dim the sun by a factor of a hundred thousand or more and uh, block all ultraviolet and infrared light so it produces a safe image to look through. Super important: the filter on the outside of the lens is right. not on the inside. Because yeah. if you have it on the inside, the, the concentrated heat will just melt them. That's right. And, the, 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 and actually, this will destroy your eyes a lot faster than, uh, <laughs> than just looking at it with your eye because you're concentrating it literally. You'll destroy yeah. other parts of your eye. Um, one thing about this is uh, some manufacturers make solar binoculars so you can't forget to put on filters or lose them or something like that. You do have to be careful in a total eclipse with filters in that uh, you take them off during totality when the sun's completely covering up because otherwise you can't see the, the total eclipse. The total part's totally safe to look at, but you have to remember to put the filters back on before the sun reappears. So again, if you don't know what you're doing with this, you're better off probably not trying it. Okay, <laughs> filters can also be made for telescopes. This is using a thin mylar filter. Again, there's solar mylar, plastic coated with aluminum, and it uh, does the exact right dimming. You, can, you don't need the whole telescope aperture. You can make a small sub-diameter one and use any astronomical telescope to look at the sun uh, safely. You can get the stuff from telescope stores. So uh, you, know, you can check and see if they carry the material and build your own filter. Or you can buy pre-mounted ones that are made specifically for all different kinds of scopes. This is what the eclipse will look like from here in Los Angeles. Uh, so it's what, 62% of the sun's area covered, I think? Or I think I, that's about right. I can't remember, it's 69% of the diameter, 62% 60 of the area. 60 something. Yeah. So it will have a partial eclipse here. So you need a filter throughout for this, or you need a pinhole projection, or however you're going to look at it, but you, need, you can't look at this directly at any time. Period. Don't even mm -hmm. think about. See, even if you think, oh, I'll just look. Like that, because you've done that with the sun before. But you're trying to, the problem is you're actually trying to see the, the shadow, you know, the shape of the moon and the sun, and that you'll linger on it longer than, a, than your eye can handle, and you'll damage your eye, so don't. With a solar eclipse, uh, all of these parts where any of the bright part of the sun is visible, you need a filter. You don't want to filter during totality because the corona, which Patrick mentioned the, the Parker probe is going to be flying through, uh, is uh, about the brightest parts of it are as bright as the full moon, and it can't hurt your eye. Even though it, it's pr producing lots of ultraviolet and x-rays and stuff like that, our atmosphere blocks that. So that, that's actually not harmful. Again, you've got to put on your filters before uh, this happens. The, the diamond ring appears, and as the sun reappears, filters on all the way. So totality will be about two minutes? Yeah, the shortest length is in or eastern, or I'm sorry, western Oregon, where it's two minutes long, and then it's about two minutes and 40 seconds at the, at, uh, the central U.S.